Hello everyone and welcome back to another MRC chess game. From 1989 in this chess game we have Lev Sekis with the white pieces who was two times chess champion of the Soviet Union and later he became Israeli citizen and he became the Israeli chess champion for two times in late 1990s. So he was basically a very strong chess player uh, in his era. So his opponent Eugene Martinovsky was the two times Macedonian chess champion. So he was also a pretty strong chess player. And this is uh, an interesting picture that I have found it. So you see Lev Sekis next to Garry Kasparov. He became the USSR chess champion in 1980 and in 1981 jointly with Garry Kasparov. So maybe this is his picture after he became the USSR chess champion with Garry Kasparov and he is giving a chess simul uh, with Garry Kasparov. Interesting. Okay, and also a pretty nice rare picture of Garry Kasparov. So without further delay, let's see what happened in this chess game. Lev Sekis starts the game with e4, e5, knight to f3, and we have the Russian game, the Petrov defense. Knight takes on e5, d6, knight takes on e4, the common move, d4, the classical variation of the Russian game, d5, bishop to d3, knight to c6, castling, bishop to g4, c4, undermining the knight. So bishop takes on f3 and giving up a pawn. But after this move, pinning the knight and c, d, c takes on d5 is possible. So attacking the queen, queen to e2, knight to d4, repeating the moves. And in this position, actually queen to e1 is possible. And that's a pretty strong move. But we have queen to h3, attacking the knight. So queen to d7, developing and defending. C takes on d5, defending the knight and knight to c3 castling from the queen side and developing the bishop completing the development knight to e7 queen to h5 and bishop takes knight and then capturing on f7 is possible so knight to g6 defending the bishop moving the king and then a4 unleashing a queenside attack so bishop to e7 a5 bishop to f6 knight to a4 and then knight to b5, attacking the d-pawn. So maybe defending the pawn comes to mind, maybe with the bishop. But in this position, Sekis is targeting the weakness on c7. So aiming the pawn with the bishop and also with the rook. And in this position, Eugene Martinovsky made a blunder. He played queen takes on d5 and this was a blunder. But can you see why this move was a blunder? So if I give you a few seconds, can you guess the next move for white? So in this position, it also looks like this is attacking the queen. Maybe defending the queen comes to mind. Or maybe exchanging the queens is maybe an option in this position. But white has a very strong move. Can you guess that move? What would you do? Okay, so Lev Sekis sacrificed his queen. Bishop takes on b5. And this is what completely black missed. So black in this position, Eugene Martinovsky, simply captures the queen. But this was also a blunder. Although in this position, even knight to e5, the most accurate move, is losing. Because white has the bishop, so white is a piece up and black is losing in this position. So after bishop takes on b5, removing the defender of f7, black captures the queen and then bishop takes on c7 by Lev Sekis. And there is only two possible moves for the king, king to c8 or king to a8. So in the real chess game, we see king to c8. If king to a8, then knight to b6, check, only move and then capturing the pawn, check, mate. So after bishop takes on c7, we see king to c8, but this is also checkmate because Sekis played bishop to e5, also blocking the queen, checking the king. You see the power of the bishop here, checkmate. 
A Very Beautiful Checkmate by Lev Sekis. So this was the breaking point of this chess game. Sekis sacrificed his queen. What a beautiful move. So queen takes on h5 and then bishop takes on c7 and black is getting checkmated. A very beautiful and a very elegant finish by the two times USSR chess champion. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Stay safe and bye bye.